brother John would actually force his right hand behind his back, and then Rich would go with his left-handed pitching motion. OCC Onondaga Community College men's lax last lost on March 27, 2010. Despite the Orange's recent success, there are a few areas the team can still work on. The Syracuse Crunch looking to stay atop the Eastern Conference faced off against division rival Bridgeport for the first time this season at the War Memorial. The 6'10 five-star recruit is done with the Orange. And while some fans are paying prime dollar for these up-close seats, Ooh, I need a break after all those stairs. Other fans are going to be sitting up here in section 301. The Crunch say they're expecting a crowd of more than 28,000. It could be enough to break the all-time indoor hockey attendance record. Syracuse Crunch goalie Kristers Gudlewski's is back at the War Memorial two weeks after the biggest game of his life. A 55-save performance for the Latvian netminder versus Team Canada. I get some uh, lots of message emails to my Facebook and then they uh, on me and that was like the most interesting thing. <laughs> Latvia lost 2-1 to Canada in the game, but Gudlewski's became a star overnight for almost beating the eventual gold medal winning team. And you go there and have one of your athletes, you know, currently at that time, be the talk of the hockey world for, uh, for a day or so, it's, it's neat. It's everything you would imagine it to be. It's all part of a whirlwind year for Gudlewski's. He's played for the ECHL's Florida Everblades, the AHL's Crunch, Team Latvia, and the NHL's Tampa Bay Lightning. You know, when the season starts, it was harder because my English wasn't so good. It still wasn't so good, but but team has helped me a lot in the Florida and here. They really support me and help me, so good part. He just fit in right away, and he, he's such a great guy that I'm sure they did. They did a lot of team bonding and stuff, and, and, and that's how it is. That's how uh, kind of hockey works when you go from group to group. Now nestled in Syracuse, the 21-year-old rookie hopes to get the crunch back into the playoffs for the third straight season. David Fine, NCC News. You get the unexpected crowd when you show up for the 22nd annual Syracuse Track Club Halloween run. Absolutely. First time is Forrest Gump, I even brought some chocolates. <laughs> so I, I own all the time, every day. But amongst the not so serious and the there just for fun. This is basically my first year for cross country. I haven't really done any runs like this. I've done a pentathlon before, a high jump, long jump, 1500. 200 and yeah hurdles and shot put but this isn't just any motivated athlete damien is just 13 years old already six feet tall basketball is your sport yes I, lo I love basketball damien has competed on syracuse university assistant basketball coach mike hopkins under 13 select team he runs a mile in six minutes and trains with his grandfather Ray to be the next high school basketball standout. Doing well uh, is probably the most rewarding factor for any parent, grandparent. And we're just kind of slowly grooming him and, and see where this takes him. And it's so delicate. Damien ran the 5K in 20 minutes, 4 seconds, best of the 14 and under class. Grandpa Ray says a decathlon is next for his budding grandson. I think just the fact that I work, I, I think I probably work a lot harder than everybody. David Fine, NCC News. And we stick in Syracuse and talk some minor league baseball. The AAA Syracuse Chiefs have started out their season with two wins and a loss. This is a roster with eight former Major League Baseball players, including Derek Robinson, who played for the Cincinnati Reds in 2013 as a September call-up, but missed all last season recovering from shoulder surgery. Robinson couldn't make the Nationals to start the season, but was looking to bolster the Chiefs to its third straight win. 
Syracuse taking on the Rail Riders. 1-0, Derek Robinson with the bunt grounder down the line. It's flubbed by Scranton Wilkesbury into short right field. The run scores to make it a 1-1 game, but then Robinson gets caught in the old pickle. That's about a pickle that you would find the size of the Carnegie Deli, and he's tagged out, and the game's tied 1-1 in the third. Eventually, though, Scranton Wilkesbury enforces their will in the field. Ben Gamble with the diving, falling away catch. Syracuse loses 3 to 1 to Scranton Wilkesbury. Welcome to NCC News. I'm David Fine. The Carrier Dome hosted its last basketball game of the season today, the NCAA Tournament East Regional Finals between Michigan State and Louisville. Current Louisville head coach and former Syracuse assistant Rick Pitino had dinner with Orange coach Jim Beheim last night. Patino was looking for his eighth Final Four appearance, hoping last night's meal wouldn't be his last in-season supper. Michigan State head coach on the other side, Tom Izzo, said he chose to have a quiet team dinner downtown at the hotel and review some film leading up to the game. 11 seconds left. Louisville's down by one to Michigan State. Rozier, the miss. Mango Mathiang puts it back, gets fouled. He's going to the line for two shots. He makes the first one, the front end, of the double bonus. He misses the second and the game goes into overtime. Winner goes to the final four. Michigan State takes advantage with the deep ball. Bryn Forbes hits a three, the Cleveland State transfer. And then from the corner, Brendan Dawson with the putback. Michigan State wins 76 to 70.